Hello there. In this video we're going to talk about two special types of probability density functions known as the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution. So far we have already seen where the normal distribution will come into play and that comes from one of the results of the central limit theorem. So in this video we're going to talk about some strategies on how to solve probabilities associated to normally distributed random variables. So as previously discussed, the PDF for the normal distribution is given by this, uh, maybe you may think, uh, complicated expression. Here, the sigma represents the standard deviation of the distribution, and mu corresponds to the mean of that distribution. And of course, as we know, this is a bell-shaped distribution. And one may be tempted to verify analytically or numerically that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this function f of x with respect to x is equal to 1. Uh, let us just assume that that is true. I'm not going to verify that here. Uh, so let us assume we want to calculate um, particular probabilities associated with this. Well, there is going to be an easier way, so I'm just going to jump straight to it. So before we jump into it, let us uh, briefly review something that we talked about a while ago, namely the z-score. So I'm going to let z sub x be equal to x minus mu x divided by sigma x. And some people may just write this as x minus mu divided by sigma if you only have one variable that you're discussing at a time. So what does this mean? So this means that z x represents the number of standard deviations a particular value x is from the mean mu. So this is what we call a z score. And as we referred to it before, this is a measure of position. So there are some special properties associated with this z-score. Namely, the z-score for mu is going to be equal to mu minus mu divided by sigma, which is equal to 0. So what else is there to say? So if we take the z-score for a particular number, and it's a particular number of standard deviations from the mean, so I'm going to call it mu plus or minus n times sigma. So if n is equal to 1, then that means uh, this value is going to be one standard deviation to the right of the mean. And if n is equal to, say, negative 2, that means this value is going to be negative 2 standard deviations to the left of the mean. So this is going to be equal to mu plus or minus n sigma minus mu divided by sigma. And what do we have here? So our mu's are going to eliminate. So it's just going to be equal to plus or minus n sigma divided by sigma. And our sigmas will cancel, just leaving us with plus or minus n. So these are two special properties that the z-score does hold. So the mean is going to go to 0, and all of our standard deviation values of x is going to map to pretty numbers such as 1, 2, 3, and their plus or minuses, and so on. Uh, so let us take a particular uh, uh, scenario. Uh, so let us assume there's a population, and its mean is, say, 50, and its standard deviation is equal to, say, 6. And let us assume that P is normally distributed. So if that is the case, then that means our distribution for x, and let us call this, uh, say, f of x, it's going to have a mean centered around 50. And let's assume we go one standard deviation higher, so that's going to be 56. Let's go another, let's say 62. And let's go down, say 44. And let us go down to, say, 38. So if we take this, so again, uh, before we go into that, so that's mu. Uh, this value is mu plus sigma. This value is mu plus 2 sigma. This value is mu minus sigma, and this is mu minus 2 sigma. And you can continue to go in either direction. So if we convert all these values with the z-score transformation, so z of x is equal to x minus mu over sigma, and we take all of the possible values, not just these green ones, and transform them all with this z-score transformation, what will we get? Well, we already know that the mean is going to go to 0. So the mean 
value here. So 50 is going to go to 0. And 56 is going to go to 1. 62 is going to go to 2. 40 is going to go to negative 1. And 38 is going to go to negative 2. And all the values are going to sort of shift with it. So why is this so useful? So again, this is not the x-axis, this is the z of x-axis. And we're going to call this horizontal, the vertical axis, n of z, and I'll, call, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So why is this so special? So if I ask you, what is the probability that x is in between, say, 38 and 56? So if I ask you, what is this area here? Well, under this transformation, that's the same as saying the integral under this new curve from negative 2 to 1. So let's write that down. So that means the integral from 38 to 56 of this normally distributed random variable f of x is equal to the integral from minus 2 to 1 of n of z dz, where z is the z-scores for the particular x values. So why is that so nice? Well, the first observation is, well, you know, these numbers could be really big, really small, really, you know, uh, complicated to work with, whereas the what we call the standard normal distribution has pretty numbers that usually are situated in between, uh, say, negative 4 and 4, usually. So in terms of terminology, this is what we usually call the normal distribution, and this is what we usually call the standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution problems are usually a lot easier to work with in terms of numbers and calculations compared to the just normal distribution in general. And let me demonstrate that with a couple examples. So example one. Suppose that you have a population P with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 2 and let us assume X is normally normally distributed. So if I ask you what is the probability that X is in between 1 and 7.5. Well, you can find the integral under the normal distribution. Uh, namely, you can find that this is equal to the integral from 1 to 7.5 of 1 divided by sigma times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half times x minus 5 divided by 2 squared with respect to x. But as you see, that is going to be a lot of that. That's going to be really complicated to usually plug into Desmos or do by hand or what have you. But nonetheless, it is possible to evaluate. So an alternative that the standard normal distribution gives us, it allows us to work with a more easier integral and work with a more easier function nonetheless. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the z-scores for these boundaries 1 and 7.5. So the z-score for 1 is going to be equal to 1 minus mu divided by sigma, which is going to be 1 minus 5 divided by 2, which is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And the z-score for 7.5 is going to be 7.5 minus mu all over sigma, or 7.5 minus 5 over 2, which is what? Uh, 2.5 divided by 2, which is 1.25. So that means 1 is 2 standard deviations to the left of the mean, and 7.5 is 1 and a quarter standard deviations to the right of the mean as well. So that means what? So that means the probability that x is in between 1 and 7.5 is the same thing as finding the probability that the z-score for x is in between minus 2 and 1.25. So this integral is the same as finding the integral from minus 2 to 
of the function 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi of e to the minus 1 half z squared dz, which I'm just going to abbreviate as the integral from minus 2 to 1.25 of n of z dz. So this is where Desmos is now going to come into play. So you're going to begin by inputting the standard normal distribution n of z is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e to the 1 half, negative 1 half z squared. Now you may be wondering where did this function come from? So this comes from the fact that, okay, we have this f of x is equal to 1 divided by sigma times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half x minus mu over sigma squared. So this value right here, that's the value of z. And the standard deviation of a distribution that's standard normal is 1. And of course, mu is equal to 0. That's like a side comment. So that's why when we transform, it turns things into this standard normal function, n of z is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half z squared. So once we have our standard normal distribution in here, now we can find associated areas with it. So I'm going to find the integral from minus 2, so minus 2 up to 1.25, of the function n of z, n of z, with respect to z. And we get 0.8716, so 0.8716. So that gives us that. So let's do a couple more examples just to make sure uh, this concept is solidified. Uh, so second example. Uh, suppose we have a population that has mean of 736 and a standard deviation of 58. And let us again assume that x is normally distributed. So what is the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 800 or that x is less than or equal to 650. So as we already know, these two events are mutually exclusive. They have no overlap. So this is just the same thing as saying the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 800 or the probability that x is less than or equal to 650. So let's write these out. So that's just going to be the integral from, let's see, 800 is going to be the lowest point up to some arbitrarily large number, f, uh, infinity, plus, and this is going to be the integral from minus infinity to 650 of f of x with respect to x. But I'm not going to work in the normal world. I'm going to work in the standard normal world. So I'm going to have to find the z-scores for these boundaries. So the z-score for 800 is going to be equal to 800 minus mu divided by sigma or 800 minus 726 over 58, which is approximately equal to 1.2759. And the z-score for 650 is 650 minus mu over sigma or 650 minus 726 over 58 which is approximately equal to negative 1.3103. So once I have my z-scores, then I can find my integrals as follows. So this is going to be equal to the integral from 1.2759 to infinity of n of z dz plus the integral from minus infinity to negative 1.3103 of n of z dz. And these are going to be calculated in the same exact way as before, where infinity is just some large number. You can say call it like uh, 10,000. So once you do that, what will you get? So for this first integral, you're going to get about equal to 0 0.1010. And this last integral, you're going to get 0 0.0951 with a value probability of 0 0.1961. And that's a quick rundown of how you solve probability distribution problems with the normal distribution by first converting it to the standard normal distribution and finding all your probabilities there. And we'll do some more examples of this in the upcoming videos.